All right, we're back. Wanted to show you right quick. Uh, that's just under 0.4. It's like 0.398 to 0.4 at certain points, at certain spots. But you can see how much larger the base is compared to these other two. You can see that the angle is going to be about this angle, but fatter. So I'm probably not going to use this one anymore. But I'm going to set these up over here. I'd made an attempt to make a cartridge box, but it came out horribly. So that's just holding my mandrels. But let me show you how I do the filters here. Now I'm only going to do uh, one filter for you. But as you can see, I've got all 15 here. These will keep just about forever. But I start by taking one of these and folding it in half. Let's line up the edges really good. Then meet these two corners here to fold it in half or fold it in a quarter. Then fold this one more time. So we got eight layers here. Then I need to get my pen out. One word of caution uh, when you're doing the nitrating and handling the filters, if you have any cuts or scrapes on your hands, you're really going to feel it. One of the things I did here is after handling these, taking them out of the dehydrator and stacking them here, I wiped the corner of my eye and it's, it's like rubbing salt in your eye. It's not pleasant. Don't do that. That's an important safety thing. Okay, so I take my form and I want to line up the top edge with the edge of the coffee filter. Now you notice that it's you now it's not going to quite fit, but that's okay. I, I want it to, to not quite fit properly. Because like I said, this one's oversized and then just come across the bottom like that. Now that's supposed to be a little bit more of an arc, but my carving skills suck, so that's a little bit more flatter than it should be. Now we actually need to keep these nearby scissors. Um, I've got purple handled exacto scissors and then gray and yellow Westcott titaniums, but um, it doesn't matter. I want to come up this edge. Because my form is a little oversized, I don't have a problem cutting just inside of that line. So that'll get most of this edge completely cut off. And since I know I need a little bit of an arc here, it makes like one of those little snow angel things. And you can just, a couple of them you'll have to tear. Try and tear them straight, or as straight as you can get them. And that's the first eight cartridges. Now you'll notice we got a little bit of left over here. So unfold this once, unfold it twice. So it's still in a half. Set this right in the middle. Line here, line across the top there, line across this back side, and set those aside. There, this one's actually going to get four cuts. Trim down the length here a little bit. Then, put it in between the two halves here. And then, snip. There you go. Ten cartridges ready to load. And as you can see, we don't have a whole heck of a lot of waste here. I mean, I could make a base or two out of these two, but that would be four out of ten. So, it's not really terribly productive to do that way. So, I just go ahead and I, I 
throw those away. Actually, I, what I want to do is I want to show you one more thing here. Let's set those aside. This is a stoneware bowl. And this is basically from the center of the... Uh, let me aim this a little better. From the center of the filter here. Where's the zoom? I want to zoom. There we go. Where's my fire spurter? Here's my fire spurter. I use this to light the candles in my room. But I want to show you how these burn when they are properly nitrated. And that's all this is, is coffee filter and potassium nitrate. Now, these are the ones that I just did. Just barely touch. Just wanted to show you that when uh, when it's not against a heat sink, that's about all you're going to have left. And this ash is extremely thin. So, anyhow, I'm going to stop this segment, and then we'll come back to form our, our cartridges. No. I should have waited to start that. Oh well. Alright, we're getting ready to make our cartridges, but we need another piece before we can proceed, and that's where these cigarette papers come in. Um, these were four bucks plus shipping and handling off of Amazon. You get 300 of them. I don't know if they're particularly good, but I've seen them in several other videos. And these are rice paper cigarette papers. So I'm just going to pull one out here. I think I only got one. All right. Now I've already measured these for size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them in half lengthwise. I'm going to fold it in half that way. I'm going to use the scissors just to straighten that angle up just a little bit. And then fold it in half one more time. Now this paper happens to be inch and a half wide by three inches long. So if I fold it that way, I can make eight bases from one cigarette paper. And those will be approximately three quarters of an inch square. I know there's a guy out there that uses a three quarter inch round punch or a half inch round punch to punch those out, but now You've been watching my videos for a while now, or at least I hope you have been. You don't need to be completely precise with these. So there's four. That's halfway done with this one. Now we got to split it that way. And as you can see, one cigarette paper makes eight bases. I've got ten uh, filter bits, so it's not an exact exchange. Now, you'll have to do several of those
to come out even, but that's okay. Anyhow, let's uh, let's start with where you need to glue. So as you can see, my I've used my glue stick quite a lot. Find the small edge. This is one of the center pieces here, and the last two millimeters approximately quarter inch you want to wipe down and then wipe up one side like that set it aside we take our newly formed mandrel here's the glue edge here's the glue edge so we start on the far end you know what I think I did that wrong. I think I did that wrong. Holy cow. Well, anyway. Trying to keep it even with the end here and roll it over itself. And then I use my fingers to flatten it out. If anything, the uh, overlap at the, the end here will adhere to itself. I'm just going to re-glue that since I probably screwed that one up. Make sure you only get one of these. And yeah, I realized what I just did wrong. Okay. First, that one was done inside out. It'll still work. But this one was done inside out. And you just slide it off the end. And oh yeah, that's much bigger than the last set. So let me do it in the right order here. So like I said, these, these aren't critical. <clears throat> and you're going to notice you make certain mistakes. So, okay. I didn't sleep very well last night, folks. So we're going to glue the end, glue the edge, and it doesn't take much. Take our mandrel and one cigarette paper, mash it down over, and kind of roll it in. Then, with the glue facing in, it helps if you wipe wax on your mandrel. I didn't do that. Like I said, I didn't sleep very well. So if you push it, just tap it, pinch it a little bit. And as you can see, these cones are a lot bigger than the last ones I made. I'm probably going to be able to up my powder charge with these. Let's see, where did my, my wax go? If you watch some of my older videos on the making of fire starters, you'll recognize this tuna fish tin. So this is what we put the wax in for doing the uh, for dipping stuff in and just rub that on there. Do it a little, a little bit past the line and then just rub the end on. And it doesn't take a whole heck of a lot. I usually smooth it down with my fingers a little bit. Stick the wax back in the can. Stick that back up on a shelf. And... Push that on. Roll it a little bit so that it'll stay in place. Wipe the bottom edge, wipe 
one side. There we go. That's the way that's supposed to be done. You'll notice that there is quite a bit of overlap on these. There's a lot less overlap on this one than there are on the first generation that I did. Because <clears throat> these are larger overall. Tuck it in real good, pull it nice and snug, roll it around in your fingers a little bit. I usually tap the end a little bit. And once it's holding, kind of chevy it off the mandrel and drop it into the loading block here. So pinch, roll your fingers just to get it started in the right shape. <clears throat> pinch and roll. And you can see this comes up way past the 1.3 inch line, which is way down here. We're almost a quarter inch past that. When we go to the next section of powdering, wadding, and balling these, you'll see why. But I got three more to do out of this batch from the cigarette paper. So I'm going to go ahead and just knock those out. I didn't drop it, but the only thing I find really terribly important is trying to get this edge lined up with the end of the dowel and holding the cigarette paper in place while you roll it. Give that a little spin, push it off, and there we go. We've got eight. 
cylinder holds six, so we've got a couple extra. So I'm going to stop this, and in the next segment, we will powder, wad, and bullet a couple of these. For this next segment, we're going to powder, wad, ball these cartridges, and this will be the final step. I'm using Black Powder Substitute 3F. I've got my uh, powder scoop here, and this should give us between 19 and 23 grains. And my little funnel here. Oh yeah, we're going to be able to put a much larger charge in these But for right now, this is the load I have been using, so this is the load I want to continue to use, at least for this demonstration period. All right, that's the powder. I'll take care of this in a minute. As I've said before, it's fairly dry in my room. I'm not terribly worried about it. And for the two or three minutes this is gonna take, I don't have a problem leaving the powder out. So what I'm gonna take a, do is take a pre-lubricated wad and you notice these ain't exactly going in straight. But that's okay. They have to be set down on the powder anyway. Oh, I almost dropped that one. So what I generally do is once I get get them in there, just use my pen to flatten them out directly onto the powder charge. Push it down. Get it in there. And you can see from the backlight the wads right here. The camera's on the tripod at the moment, or else I'll bring it over here and show you what I'm seeing. This one's going to be annoying, which happens. One of the things about the coffee filter design here is, it, is it's a little bit more robust, so you don't have to worry about it tearing. As you can see, one side's not going in properly. So I'm pinching that side, lifting up as I push down to get the, the wad seated. One more. And that one went in really nice. And just tap it down against the powder. So, this last step is the most tedious and the dirtiest, in my opinion, because you have no choice but to get your hands dirty. These are 454 balls. I've used 451 in the past. What you want to do is get it in the side here, roll it around so you can get a nice good coverage of glue. Since the glue is not going to come in contact with the powder because of the wadding, a little too much or doing it, you know, a little out of angle ain't bad. Now you're going to drop it in here and the mother and the, the mother bugger is going to roll. I caught myself there. That's okay. What we're going to do is just pinch it over the top and give it a little bit of a spin. Now these are a lot shorter than some of the other cartridges I've made because it was volumetrically speaking they were narrower and longer. But with the glue on your finger 
that's one done. So let me knock out these other five right quick. And I push it into the side, roll it with my finger, so I get a nice coating all the way around. Drop it in. And I'm kind of pinching at it so that it sets into the wad a little better. You see that one didn't quite overlap as much. These are labor intensive, but a lot less labor than trying to reload with loose powder out in the field. Let's drop it in, kind of pinch it in, give it a little bit of a twist. And as you can see, I go fairly quickly once you get the hang of it. I know it's kind of hard to see the coating on the bullet in the camera. Just kind of pinch it over, or fold it over, pinch it and give it a little bit of a twirl. That also helps you get some of the glue off your fingers. Now this is the first time I've loaded these into paper cartridges. I've shot this size out of my Pieta 1858 before and it, it shaved off a little bit of a little ring of lead out from around the bullet which is what you want to have happen of course. Alright and that's six cartridges done. In the next segment, I hope to take these out and compare these six to some of the ones I made previously. Now, it's the same powder charge, so it shouldn't be that big of a difference. Hello, folks. If you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up, hit the like, subscribe, the little bell icon, leave a comment, comment section below, because YouTube changed the way their uh, algorithms work, and, well, if you don't comment they won't update you when i upload new content don't forget i have a twitch i have a patreon and i have a paypal that you can donate money to me at straycat underscore 74 at yahoo.com so from the basement of solitude i'll catch you next time